Well, let's be clear. Reading the testimony of survivors of October 7th from Kibbutz Bi'eri, like Yasmin Porat, was extremely harrowing. What she alleges is not only that her husband was killed in the initial takeover, but also she then says that the Israeli military tanks fired on the room where the hostages were, killing 12 Israeli civilian captives. We have also seen fantastic work in the Haaretz newspaper by Amos Harrell, where he speaks at length about uh, Brigadier General Rosenfeld, who was in charge of the Haaretz crossing. Now, when this military base was taken over, what he says, Amos Harrell in Haaretz, the well-known Israeli newspaper, he says that Rosenfeld, when he realized that the base was overtaken, called in an airstrike. This is in Haaretz. These are not my words. These are the words of Amos Harrell. What we then saw is since October the 7th, 22 Israeli civilian detainees killed in Gaza by Israeli airstrikes. The Israeli military has something called the Hannibal Directive. The Hannibal Directive was developed in Lebanon in the 80s by the Israelis with the clear understanding that they do not want the other side to take hostages. So, for example, you have the case of um, Hada Golding, Golding in 2014, what Israel called Operation Protective Edge, which killed over 2,200 Palestinians. But when uh, this Israeli soldier was taken captive by the Palestinians, Israel then proceeded to kill everyone, including the civilians in the area around where he was kept and the soldier himself. So what Israel has, unfortunately, is a policy of killing captives. If you look at the case of Gilad Shalit, this was yeah, an Israeli I, well, soldier. Just, all right, listen, allow I, me I, to finish. I, I, allow me to finish. Well, yeah, and don't no, you can't just me. keep talking. You can't but, keep talking. No, no, I have and one talking, last talking. point to make, and I hope all that right. you'll allow me to make it. In the all case right. of Gilad Shalit, what happened was one Israeli soldier led to a thousand Palestinian prisoners being released. There is a clear understanding within the Israeli military and political elite that they do not want people to be kidnapped. So therefore, they unfortunately, as history has shown us and as the directive within the Israeli military shows, they take action to kill their own captives that have been taken by the other side. So just for the record, do you condemn what Hamas did that day? I condemn the genocidal conditions which have created this violence. Every heartbeat, every human heartbeat is sacred to me. And that is what has compelled me to work as I have for the last 15 years no, to question, save lives, Loki. to save that lives and question. stop people dying. Yeah, but that wasn't we my do, question. No, no, we do not have a clear picture of what happened on October 7th because unfortunately, too much of the media has relied on the Israeli military talking points which are given directly to them. Until so you don't neutral believe. observers, oh, so, so until neutral okay, observers are able respond. to establish the facts of October 7th, I will not, I will not allow the talking points of the Israeli military to become dominant mm. of what happened on that day. You know, you are Palestinians the, are subject say, to a genocidal look, me, war. Collective punishment in Gaza is real. Me, if they've admitted it, do you condemn what they did? I absolutely mourn the loss of all human life in this conflict, and I have struggled for 15 years of my life in a way mm. that appears, to be honest, you haven't, okay? And I take you as an empathetic person with a high level of emotional intelligence, okay? Mm. I have struggled for 15 years of my life to stop the killing, for a ceasefire now, to stop deaths. But I have to say, Piers, that actually this line of questioning, unfortunately, on a personal level, is somewhat hypocritical, and I'll explain why. Mm. On April 18th, 2022, you said the exact phrase that you feel like Nelson Mandela walking out of prison on the long road to freedom of speech. Today, there is a statue for Nelson Mandela outside parliament. Now, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, Beit Salim, and even the Harvard Law School have said that Israel practices apartheid against the Palestinian people. Do you know what the ANC struggle against apartheid 
entailed? Are you aware that the ANC are believed to have very unfortunately, horrifically and terribly taken the life, lives of children and civilians in their struggle against apartheid? So, Piers, you seem absolutely content to not only compare yourself to Nelson Mandela, who served 27 years in jail for what they described as terrorism at the time, but yet you cannot see what the vast majority of human rights organizations in the world see when they look at the Palestinians. When you look at UN Resolution 194, paragraph 11, the Palestinians have the right to return home. Almost a, a million of them were displaced in 1948 with the foundation of the State of Israel. And what we are now on the brink of is Palestinians, millions of, millions of them, being driven into the Sinai Desert with help of the US Delta Force, yeah, but Loki, with Loki, help let me of jump the British. In. This let me jump is in. a manufactured, making... an Israeli manufactured okay. humanitarian catastrophe in you Gaza. Are making... There is a 23% making... infant mortality Loki, rate let me say in something. Gaza. Let me say something. I completely agree with you about the plight of the Palestinian people. I've tweeted about this for the last two weeks. No, no, to be fair, you haven't, Piers, and this is not journalism. Shirin Abu well, Akhla was tweets. journalism. Yasser Murtaja was journalism. Mu'taz uh, Azaiza, that's journalism. Palestinians right. are reaching out from the cage that Israel has put them in, and they are trying to speak to the world. Yeah, and they are I'm being met, saying, they are being met with cold indifference. And I would say to you, Piers, I would say to yeah. you that that gentleman that you've just had on the show Mark, mm -hmm. Mark Regev, he belongs in The Hague. David mm -hmm. Petraeus, you know, Piers, you made your reputation as opposing the invasion of Iraq. Well, yeah. I would ask you, journalist to journalist, how mm. could you justify the interview you just gave to the head of US forces in that illegal occupation of Iraq that David Petraeus led? He was then the head of the CIA. Both of the individuals mm. that you have just had on this show deserve to be in The Hague tried for war crimes. I am not anything like them. I have not hurt a fly. Those two men have. Why are they given the respectability that you gave them with your interview? And why am I interrogated as if I am somehow someone that could hurt a human being? And, and, and Piers, well, this is not journalism. The idea of us comparing our moral compasses and somehow mm. I have a deficient moral compass. Somehow I am a I moral monster. That. You know, you know what's that. true? You know what's true? Is I, I am that. not. The people that have shown a cold indifference to the ethnically cleansed Palestinians, dispossessed, mm. one in three every refugee in the world is Palestinian. They are the largest refugee right. population. Those who have turned a blind eye to their suffering are those that need right. to be seriously interrogated about their moral compass. And I would ask you, I would ask no, you before we end the show, no, I would ask okay. you that I am able to read out the names of the 20 Palestinian journalists no, you that can't. have been I'm killed sorry. in Gaza. I have so because I have two so, more guests. So you're we censoring me. To have eight minutes so you're censoring me. Four left. It's 20 journalists. Have, so I'm being no, censored now. And I'll tell I you something to, else. You're not being this censored. Badge, this, badge, more, this badge, this oh, badge, right. zoom in on this badge. This badge okay. was given to me by an employee of this building who said they were told mm. they could not wear this badge because it was the Palestinian flag. You talk about mm. uncensored, this is censored. Nobody, this badge well, I was haven't banned told anybody from they an can, employee I, in this building I have told because nobody they stand they with the Palestinian people. So that's a ridiculous thing to say. I'm in New York.